Welcome to Heavenly Realities. This is our new web-based show. We're going to be talking about visions and revelations of the Lord. When we have timely prophetic encounters, experiences, dreams, and we believe that there's something that God wants to share with you that's going to give you an open heaven, impartation, that's going to make you hungry, we're going to do these shows. And so we want you to get ready because we want to make heaven real in your life. Tell your friends, and now let's go to the show. Welcome to Heavenly Realities. We want heaven to be real. We want to make heaven real for you. And we're talking about visions and revelations of the Lord. Real prophetic encounters and experiences that people are having today. These could be healing. These could be words of knowledge. We could talk about prosperity and miracles. I mean, not just angels and open heaven stuff, but whatever the Lord's giving to us. Really uh, timely prophetic messages, timely prophetic words. Now, you're going to want to share this with your friends. And you're going to want to tell them they can come to our website, freshfireusa.com, and they can watch this. And, and these are going to be led of the Lord. These are going to be uh, periodic as the Lord leads. And it may be every week. It may be every couple weeks. It may be once a month. But as the Lord leads, we're going to make these shows, this web-based show, available to you. And we're going to pray in every episode. So you're not going to want to miss it. Because at any time, the Spirit of God could fall and begin to move. And we could begin to prophesy and call out words of knowledge, move and healing. But... For sure, at the end of every one of these episodes, we want to pray for you for an impartation. We want to pray that God makes heaven real and that you experience his glory and his presence and his anointing. So today, we're going to be talking about the glory of God with my good friend, Jason Hooper. How you doing, Jason? I'm doing great today, Todd. How you doing? I'm doing great. This is exciting. I'm telling you, you know, we, we are living under an open heaven right now. That's visitation right. after visitation from the Lord right now. And as you've been sharing testimonies about the way the Lord is visiting you, people have begun to become hungry and enter into their own open heavens where they're beginning to experience the Lord. But one of the questions we're seeing come from so many people who are who are beginning to hunger and beginning to, to really desire encountering the Lord in this way is, how did the open heaven begin for you? How did you enter into a season of visitation? What was the key? What was the process? How did you posture your life to begin to see heaven opened up over you? And I'm I'm sure people that are familiar with our ministry and have heard our testimony over the years, I mean, you've probably heard me time to time make mention of the three-month visitation that I had in 1998, the Glory Liquid Honey Cloud. For those that have been following the ministry, that was a season of visitation. It was really the first season in which there was an extended time in the glory of God, heaven opened, and I had many prophetic experiences that ended up birthing and launching our ministry. That's right. yeah. And uh, I'm in a season like that again right now. And it's it's been pretty close to three months now. Yeah. Again, and God's been visiting me in a really profound way, and not just myself, but so many people around me are getting stirred up. You know, it's, it's great to see Rick, you know, yeah. Rick Joyner getting excited again yeah. about wanting revelations. We were sitting at the table the other day. He goes, well, I'm under my own open heaven right yeah. now. I began to start talking about the way the Lord is visiting him. In the middle of the night. Yeah, you know? yeah. there's and, a real uh, hunger being stirred. Yeah, And really, we want to we wanna pray that every believer That's can right. say, I'm Come under on. my own open heaven That's right. right now. Yeah. And, uh, and so what started it all was um, phasing back into ministry. Mm-hmm. And the first service that I did was That's December right. 18th. That's right. And I think every Christian really does need to, to get a hold of this message. We do have it on our website in our MP3 store, and it's called Spiritual Hunger. Mm-hmm. And uh, I remember Rick said it was, if not one of the best messages he's heard ever That's right. on hunger for God. That's right. And it wasn't just the words. There was a spirit of revival that came in. We did a service here at Morningstar on December the 18th on hunger, and it really did happen. People just charged the altar. There was there no was altar an impartation call. on it. A groan began to come up in the hearts of those who were there. I was there, and it, something got on me yeah. in hunger that, that, that really began That's to push the, key. the envelope. Yeah. The key is spiritual hunger. The key is desperation. It's holy hunger. But how do we make ourselves hungry? I mean, there's yeah. things I've done over the years, you know, whether it's watching uh, old footage of miracle meetings and yeah. watching some of the God's generals, yeah. or whether it's I'm, I'm reading about revival. Mm-hmm. I love to read about revival. I love spiritual biographies. Mm-hmm. You know, I, 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 and here's one of the important keys. You need to learn to eat when you're not hungry. That's good. A yeah. lot of people eat when they're hungry, and if they don't feel the grace to pray, you know, but you need to eat when you're not hungry, and mm-hmm. the Lord will honor you with hungry times. That's right. It, it's not like when you want to eat food, you only eat when you're hungry. 
what we need to force feed ourselves spiritually, That's even good. if that means a chapter a day yeah. or a few minutes here and there. Maybe we're not praying for hours and experiencing an open heaven. That's right. But we need to we need to feed ourselves. But that really is the key. But you know. I believe we can ask God for the grace, the supernatural That's gift right. to be hungry. It yeah. really is an anointing that comes on your life. That's and right. uh, we talked about that. And that was the beginning of the open heaven was, was that getting hungry and falling That's in right. love with Jesus. All I want is the presence of God again. All I want is the presence of Jesus again. And with what I've been through this last 18 right. months or so, I've been able to come back to the place where it's the foundation again, rebuilding the foundations. Right. And all I have is the Lord. Yeah. And I'm starting all over again. And this time we want to build something that lasts forever yeah. and build stronger and better. And so I've just gotten back to hunger and I've just gotten back to what I call the secret place and seeking the presence of God. That yeah. really is the key to the open heaven, not yeah. seeking angels or seeking a certain prophetic experience, right. but seeking the face of God, That's seeking right. the presence of God, spending hours in the word of God. That's right. That's what started it all. And the second thing, and most people have probably watched the video on our website. It's on our website, but it's Bob Jones uh, breaking a That's curse right. off of my life. He called it a curse. And I can believe that, you know, because life and death are in the power of the tongue. We can say things, critical things, you know, and, and I mean, some of the things people are saying is rightly so. I mean, sure. we've made mistakes. I've made mistakes. You've made mistakes. We, we've all sinned and fallen short of But sometimes those judgments can be in a wrong spirit. But they can exactly. be in a critical spirit. They can have a religious spirit, a critical right. spirit, an angry, offended spirit. Mm -hmm. And people say things, not just Christians, but there truly is a, a witchcraft. There yeah. truly is death in life or in the words. You mm -hmm. eat the fruit of your mouth. Right. We're satisfied with the fruit of what comes out of our mouth. So when Bob Jones showed up on a Sunday morning, he said Christmas Day. Bob said he had a face-to-face -face visitation of the Lord on Christmas Day, and the Lord commanded him, and he used the word the Lord commanded him, that he needed to come and break a curse, not just off me, but off Morningstar. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was like a death curse, and it was the, the heavens being cluttered up with so much that people were saying he felt like it shut me down and that there was a curse yeah. that had been placed on my life. And I remember when Bob prayed for me, he broke something and he said now I activate you and release you back into the supernatural faith yep. and I felt this wind come right down into my belly and it came up out of my mouth and my whole body was vibrating under the power of God and I felt like the engine was turned on I felt like in that one instant you know 18 months of being in a season of healing and, and rest and restoration but in one service one prayer commanded by the Lord right. one visitation and boom, it was like God unlocked something in me. And it was just days later that you were so hungry for God, Hooper. Yeah. You went in and met with the, the School of students, Ministry yeah. students. Rick asked you to come in. And just and pray a prayer of hunger. Of hunger. Yeah, impart hunger. Yeah. And it turned into this 12-hour meeting yep. with the students here at the school. That's right. And I ended up getting phone calls and text messages you from all day long saying, the kids are being touched by the power right. of God. Come on, we're in, you know, by, by 11 o'clock, we're in revival. You I'm were like, telling me. You got to get here. Come on now. Revival's happening. <laughs> That's right. There's a breakout. That's know? right. Get over here. God is moving. He's doing something. Hunger is being, being cultivated. You know, you, know, you, you brought up in the, in the first two keys, one, the hunger. Yeah. And secondly, the breaking of curses. You brought up two, two really great points that we really want to drive home. And the first, you know, in Job 23, 12, when Job is talking about the process where he entered into times of visitation, even in his own life, he said, I desire greatly the commandments of the Lord, the words of his lips, more than my necessary food. Yeah. And, and that was what began to start happening with, with the students, with myself, with others. We began to really hunger, not just, not just to hear about him, but to meet with him face to face. And everybody got on their face at the altar. Yeah. There was weeping. There was repentance. There was. There was prayer. And, uh, you Laying know. Laying aside the weight and sin that, you know, it kept us back in times past. Absolutely. And, and we had a 12-hour meeting virtually yeah. the yeah. first day. And a lot and of then it we was decided, repentance, yeah. we decided, do you want to just go for it the next night? Yeah, and see what happens. We were just going to have a meeting and see if the Lord came again. Yeah, and he did. He did. And he and kept coming, kept coming stronger. And, and really what was coming, you know, there were great miracles and there were great healings. But it was more than anything was that weighty, tangible, glory oh, presence of glory, God. The just glory. the weight of God. And, you know, it's continuing now. Here we yeah. are in March, right. and it's it's been nearly three months, 10, 11 weeks, mm -hmm. and we're still going for it. That's right. And uh, we're, we're hosting the Holy Spirit. We've been talking about how to host the presence right. of God. But the greatest thing isn't just what's going on in the meetings, but it's what we're carrying home with us. Yeah. And the sure. hunger continues. Mm -hmm. And the first real sign that God's moving is I look at the fruit of my own life. That's right. Yeah.